the 60s, a time when American communities burst into flames full of rage and frustration. Civil disorder erupted in several major cities in the United States, later fueled by the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. News organizations were stunned. Good evening, Dr. Martin Luther King, the apostle of nonviolence in the civil rights movement, has been shot to death in Memphis, Tennessee. You guys have got to get some black people out here because they were stoning the white reporters. They weren't just, you know, not speaking nicely to them or refusing to talk to them. They were being, a lot of them were being stoned and attacked. I walk in the city room and Larry Jenkins meets me and he says, B, there's a riot in the city. Would you like to cover it? And I'm saying to myself, is Burr Red, is Burr Red is scared of the brow patch? Because that's where I lived in Liberty City. I'm sitting in the art department and in comes an editor and he said, Mer, would you do us a favor? He says, we're going to get somebody to take your place. Will you go down here with the reporter? I said, you want me to take care of him, don't you? And he said, yes. And I said, well, no problem, because I wanted to see what was going on myself. And so I went down there with the reporter, who was white. And the next thing I know, bottles were being thrown, rocks were being thrown, police were firing shots. And I told a young reporter, I said, you know, I don't know if I can protect you here. And I called in the paper and I said, look, He's coming back, and I'll handle it from here. What I'll do is I will call and let you know what's going on, and you all can write the story from the safety of the newsroom. I think that the reaction of many media managers at the time was any available black person who's willing to go out on the street uh, and go into a black community and tell us, please go in there find out what's happening, come out and tell us white folks so we can tell the rest of the world. The question on everyone's mind was why? Why did America's neighborhoods turn into racial battlegrounds? To answer that question, President Lyndon Johnson formed what came to be known as the Kerner Commission. Months of hearings by the commission led to revealing as well as disturbing findings. What we found uh, in the media, of course, was that, um, for example, uh, the um, editor of the Memphis newspaper where Dr. King was assassinated, for example, said that at the time of that uh, terrible assassination, we had no uh, black reporters at all. But there was a little bit of talk about whether we should use the word racism, which seemed rather harsh to some people. But we decided, let's just uh, uh, say what we actually believe, let's tell the truth. When the Kerner Commission report came out, and it said what we all believed, <laughs> that America was moving into these two separate but unequal societies. But this is what Dr. King said at the Kerner Report. I don't know if you remember this. He said it's a doctor's, uh, the Kerner Report, a doctor's warning of approaching death with a prescription for life. The Kerner Commission Report was really a wake-up call to America um, with regards to the lack of diversity in our industry. Then the Kerner Commission, uh, came out and not only uh, did it talk about the, the, the riots, but it talked about the, you know, the complicity of the media in, in uh, having uh, uh, produced the kind of America in which you know, these, these kind of riots could occur. Before long, people realized it wasn't just a black-white issue, that many other groups, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Asian Americans, were underrepresented in coverage and employment in the media. It's as, as plain as, uh, as the nose on your face that how can you uh, report intelligently about a community of people that you don't know anything about. We've got not only uh, issues regarding uh, race, but we're talking about economic uh, fault lines that developed. And, you know, the reality is uh, our society is even split beyond two societies. Yeah, well, we made that mistake, too. Uh, furthermore, we, we, we uh, decided quickly that uh, if we are going to do it, we were going to get, we weren't going to get any tokens. We were going to get two more people. Turned out they were, a lot of them were hired basically because of their color. And uh, uh, that isn't what makes a good journalist. 
The riots led to a major influx of journalists of color in the nation's newsrooms. But that was only the beginning of the story. For, for a long time, I didn't have a test. And I remember uh, one of the guys who came in early in the afternoon, I had my stuff on, on his desk, and he walked in with this sweep of one arm, just pushed everything off on the floor. You know, and I was, and I, I was really upset at that, but nothing I could do about it. That guy turned out to be one of the news director here at the station one time. It would throw me off because I wasn't used to using the, the, the facilities, and uh, all of a sudden my stories uh, would lose. You know, when my story came on, some somewhere between the editing booth and, and putting it in the machine, uh, uh, something would break, and uh, so my, my stories ended up you know, in, in, in sabotage situations. I did nothing about it. I just continued to work because I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know, that I, I didn't think I had any place to go to complain about it. I just simply said, I'll work through this. I'll figure it out. So therefore, that made it even more isolated and difficult to, uh, to deal with uh, what might be called taunts and, and, um, and, and sabotage. You know, you know, Sid Mel, I've never talked about this. I've never, ever, this is the first time I've ever said this. You gotta understand, when I started working at the Miami Herald, black women were still being called by their first name while white women was referred to as Ms. or so-and-so or Ms. so-and-so. Now, television is about making money, is about getting ratings, is about having a warm and fuzzy anchor, um, and we're not fulfilling our um, traditional role to be watchdog, to afflict the comfortable and comfort the afflicted. She was the pioneer. Dorothy was alone for a while. It must have been tough. It must have been tough. But on the other hand, there's some joy in being a pioneer. It was also a time when uh, blacks were so lowly regarded that if there was a black death, it was called a cheap death, and we don't have to, we don't have to cover it. Uh, this was from some of the old, old, old editors, you know, on the city desk. Some of the reporters refused to speak to me, and they turned their heads the opposite way. So there were a lot of, you know, things that were slights that, that really uh, uh, were difficult. 